Oh, there are a 10 foot truck. Good attitude services. And I'm heading out. Just did three pallets all in the same area. So basically, I was driving pallets back and forth of materials, uh, heavy, uh, pretty heavy materials, probably a couple thousand each. So that was a good day. I've been, I've done that for this company for some time. And um, they're, uh, they're trying to repair the truck, but they may just go ahead and buy another truck because they have problems. They have a, it's a diesel truck, which they're thinking about getting gas, I think, because uh, they got a heater on it. Because uh, the repair costs of uh, those diesels are a little bit, it's a little bit more expensive. Even though they go a lot of miles, they, they can be pretty expensive. So, get my shades on. There we go. Okay, now it's heading home. Uh, let's see what we got here. And it's cold out today. Really cold. I mean, it's been cold for the last week or so. I mean, really cold, not just cold, but like freezing. <laughs> like below freezing. Today, I think it's like, yeah, it's more reasonable. It might be like, I can't even tell, I haven't looked. Maybe 15, 16 degrees, I don't know, 20. But before that, the last couple days, it's getting dropping below zero, so. That was a lot, a lot of uh, ice. Tonight, it's supposed to snow. That was a warning for snowing coming in. So that'll be fun. Uh, and I have a job, I'm supposed to have a job for a repeat customer tomorrow. But if this snowstorm comes in too heavy, um, and the drive is going to be pretty, it's going to be far away, so I don't know how that's going to work. I may have to cancel on that, but this worked out because it's just right before the snowstorms. I had the three, three, three loads, three pallet loads, um, all within, um, all within the area, so it's not like I had to go too far. I only had to go, wait till this guy comes out. He'll drive so fast these days. Um, Oh, yeah, it was all within 25 miles of my house. So in that case, that's uh, not a lot of miles for... I'm going to go right here. Roundabouts. within 25 miles, so that's not too bad. Not too shabby. Uh, I don't like going too long distance with this truck. Forklift it in and forklift it out. 
Now today they had to separate the loads because usually I would just load up two pallets or whatever. But on one load I had to do two separate runs because uh, even though it's not too far away, but because they don't have the extended forks, like they don't have the proper forks in a truck type, like a truck like this or a van. You have to have, you know, when you're loading the pallets, you want to put one all the way up to the front and then the one behind it. Or sometimes if you have enough space, you can put three pallets if you have a long enough truck or like a sprinter van. But uh, I guess normal size pallets I can do about two in here. But they have to have extended forks so they can, or they can push it in far enough. And then when you, they're getting it out, they have to have those forks either that or something to hook onto the. They can hook onto the fork, so the fork can pull it out. But the, the other place only had um, didn't have a forklift. They had um, a pallet jack, but I don't have a ramp. So, but the pallet jack they had was a uh, I never seen one before. There, they they lift up, the forks lift all the way up, and they go onto the truck. Except they're not you can't put extended forks. And it doesn't have enough power to pull the other pallet out because it's just it's a pallet jack that stands up but it's mechanical it has a, like, I don't know, an electric motor or whatever but I thought those are cool you know I mean if you have one of those they're, they're handy to have if you're if you're not if you don't want to spend all that money on a forklift and you're just loading stuff in and out to the you know this, these guys are manufacturing company they're not like a warehouse and they're moving stuff around up in the big you know racks and stuff they're just bringing it into the warehouse and the materials they need to for their uh making things uh, so in that case you don't need a forklift you can use one of those unless you're loading these uh you know like these vans and these trucks where you have to have the extended fork so that's the only that's the only downfall of that i had to do two loads so uh if someone were to bring a load uh if someone were to have a load all the way up to the front and, uh they have to run up they have to get a winch and winch it out of there because without the forks Fork, uh, that pallet jack having enough, uh, having enough, having enough uh, power to pull it back, it wasn't a very big machine. So in that case, you would have to figure something else out. But instead, I just, just did double loads because those pallets were, you know, those materials they were pretty heavy. I, mean, I don't know how much, but no less than 2,000 pounds. You know, you're not going to pull that out by your, by hand, and you, you don't want to unload it by hand either. Um, so that's the way it goes on that. But so it gave me a little more extra work having to do those other extra runs because I have to charge for each each uh, run I charge for it separately. So yeah, it works out pretty good. Um, so that was it for today. Uh, probably tomorrow, not much because uh, unless the snow doesn't isn't as bad. Another thing I wanted to talk about. I mean, that was. was uh, what got me thinking is that these guys, they're going to have to 1099 me because uh, they, they contacted me as an independent contractor to do their loads. I'm not working with them. So and I've, I've made more than, you know, with that company, I've made more than, than your whatever $600 limit for when you, I think, I'm not, I don't know the exact laws anymore because things change, but I used to do subcontracting for a furniture store and they would 1099 me uh, because I would make way more than $600 doing the loads. So that's the same with here, but I don't know if it's still $600 because the laws have changed. Uh, I don't know if uh, people are aware, but uh, I became aware of uh, these new um, independent contractor uh, re uh, regulations that are coming through the federal government. And then ultimately they're gonna be passed on down to the states uh, I, I don't know exactly, so you would have to go out and look on the internet because I only heard some stories from mainly from these uh, gig app uh, YouTubers that I came across. Um, one guy's name is Rideshare Rodeo. He's a rideshare guy, and he uh, he was interviewing uh, different people who were involved in uh, trying to help um, with this. You know, they're they're concerned about this legislation how it's going to affect uh, 1099 uh, independent contractors because uh, they're going to be there's going to be certain criteria that uh, a person who hires an independent contractor they're going to have to go have you know very strict criteria 
to consider them an independent contractor, and if they don't, if they don't uh, qualify for that criteria, this is what I'm, I don't know exactly. I'm just kind of, I'm gonna have to go look into it more. But, but, but from what I've seen, if they don't qualify, then they're gonna have to hire that person as an employee, which means uh, paying them, you know, like an employee, with, uh, you know, with a W-2, a W-2 employee, which is very expensive. That's why companies prefer, prefer to do independent contractorship. Like, for instance, for me, for this company that I'm delivering materials for, uh, they don't really need me all that much, uh, just maybe uh, here and there, like, maybe four times a month or whatever. They just need materials moved around. It wouldn't be worth it for them to hire me as an employee, part-time employee, W-2, and have to do all that, uh, the taxes and do all that accounting. It's much easier for them and it's much more reasonable for them to just find an independent contractor and then just do a 1099. So, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that because that's going to cause a lot of uh, issues with people, with companies too. I, rem I remember back in the day, way back when I was working at UPS, UPS used to actually hire, they used to have, jan they used to hire janitors uh, so you could, and I want to get that job because I, you know, I don't mind cleaning. And, uh, and it was less uh, less physical because, you know, well, I learned differently when I, actually janitorial can be just as physical, just not lifting boxes, but I didn't I didn't get the job. I think they had, by the time that I got onto UPS, they started subcontracting, they had been subcontracting a janitorial company. In fact, one of the companies, I, I used to work for a janitorial company. That company used to subcontract their janitorial services to, for UPS and for uh, the library system and for you know big companies and um, so but in the old days these big companies would actually hire would have janitor janitors and maintenance people on their payroll uh, but it, you know it was, obviously it was too costly for them and they they, they, and they could just subcontract these, these these people to do that so so it was pretty common for you know uh, if you work for a big company in the old days for to have you know all all types of workers basically under their payroll, but as time went on, especially in construction, I mean everything seems to be subcontracted. Um, but I know, like in you know, I'm just using using UPS as an example because I remember when they were hiring for janitors. But if you go to the UPS now and look on their website, they're not hiring for janitors because they subcontract all that. But now with these new laws, what's going to happen? Are they going to have to? Are they going to be able to subcontract? I mean, I don't know how, because the laws are they're going to be more, uh, they're going to be putting more of a microscope on everybody. Uh, they really look like they're pushing for people to be W-2 employees, unless they absolutely follow the whole strict criteria, which I don't even know what that is. Um, you'd have to look it up. Um, I know, like I said, that guy who had the YouTube channel, um, the Rideshare Rodeo, he, uh, he seems to be much more knowledgeable. I mean, he really has broken down the whole thing. I haven't watched enough because his videos are pretty long, so I don't have the time, but he has guests on who are very, uh, actually involved with, uh, some of the legislation, I think, or there are there people that are fighting the legislation. I don't know exactly who these people are, but if you look him up, you'll find out more information on this, this, uh, what this, this, uh, new regulations are coming out federally. And then possibly state states are going to be uh, dealing with on their own, but um, it's uh, it's interesting. It's supposed to be coming out, I think, in March uh, of this year, 2024. So something to look into. I mean, I'm looking. I'm maybe looking into it more because it may affect what I'm doing right here with this company. And this company, they're real nice people, and I, I want to continue on with doing these subcontracting drives. It's a regular, even though it's not full time, it adds on to all my other types of jobs that I do that are based all independent contracting, all self-employed. Another thing I was thinking, well, what about like people who hire me to do moving for their house or do a pickup delivery or junk removal? I mean, are they gonna have to? How does that work? I mean, I would think that's I would think that's definitely an independent contractor. I think when it's gonna come into a gray area or when they're gonna be 
making these companies fill out paperwork and follow the, the restrictions or the regulations, I think it's only going to be from company to independent contractor. I don't think, unless I'm wrong, if anyone out there knows uh, more about it, let, please let me know in the, in the uh, comments section of the YouTube video because I was thinking, what if you go mow someone lawn, someone's lawn on a regular basis, like, uh, like once a week or twice a week? That's pretty consistent. It's part time, but those other residential people that, that are hiring you, they're gonna have to uh, hire you and consider you an employee. I mean, that, that's kind of, I don't know how that would even work, but uh, I don't know if it's gonna go that far. But unless someone knows more about it, because according to that guy at the Ride Chair Rodeo, he, he says it's extremely, it's a big document. I mean, there's a lot to it. It's like, it's like a huge, it's almost like a book. And it's very complicated, so I don't know if anyone's read the whole thing. Maybe he did, I don't know. But, I mean, unless you've read the whole thing, how would you know exactly what's going on? Um, so I'm just, I just know a little bit about it from hearing on the YouTube video. I, I know, I haven't read anything about it. I've seen some articles about it online, but... Uh, It'd be something to look into because this could change a lot. Um, it could have a serious impact on self-employed independent contractor workers in, in different situations. I, I don't know if it's all, it's all, all situations are going to be affected, but I think that one that I'm doing today, uh, the one job I just did today, uh, hauling uh, pallet loads of uh, materials for one company, that could be a problem, and I hope it doesn't a problem because I enjoy that that side business and or those those jobs. That's, and um, it's less labor for me because I'm used to lifting heavy things and doing you know moving and furniture delivery and junk hauling. When you do those pallet loads, it's all forklifts, so you don't have to do any labor. So I like that. It's just driving, and it's not that far. It's I mean the furthest I've gone for that company is um, I've gone out to Idaho. Um, but not that far, pretty much in the same area, but in the same metro area, so it's like within 25 miles, so, uh, so hopefully I can keep doing that, um, but I think it's going to take time, because people probably, most people, most companies aren't even aware of it, it's just, it's, it's kind of just, it's coming into people's uh, awareness just recently, and for me, I only, I think I learned about it a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was a month ago, I started hearing about it, that's why I watch YouTube, because a lot of YouTube channels, they, they, uh, a lot of stuff comes out. It's almost like you'll see stuff come out before the news, even before like a news station talks about it. So it's good to keep aware of uh, things in business and they're gonna affect your uh, making a living and, and running a business. So I suggest anyone that's doing independent contracting work or um, you know, or uh, self-employment, whether it's construction or, or delivery or uh, even these gig apps like DoorDash and Uber Eats, Uber and Rideshare, and like cleaning, like what about cleaners and landscapers and you know musicians? I'm, I'm a musician myself. I mean, if you go play a gig at a at a, at a venue, are they going to consider you an employee, or how's that going to work with 1099? Um, we'll see. It's going to be something to look into. Uh. We'll just have to pay attention to that because it's going to be it's going to be something that um, could be a problem. I don't know yet. I can't really make a judgment call on that because some people may be happy about it because maybe some of these companies, I guess, are going to have to consider them employees and pay them a certain amount of wage. But I think a lot of people just enjoy being an independent contractor because of the flexibility. I know I do because you can do multiple businesses without getting in the way like I can do junk removal I can do furniture delivery I can do moving I can do assembly I can do expediting pallets I can do landscaping or, or cleaning or whatever I choose to do uh, when I'm meeting people out there they always there's always some opportunity to do I've, I've been offered landscaping jobs I've been offered so there's all these different things you can do you want to be able to juggle those uh, you don't want to be able to go back and forth with those without having a, a, a strict schedule. 
man. Because if you start getting a strict schedule, it it, it, it can uh, it can hinder the amount of business you can get with, when you're doing that kind of thing. So that's what I'm worried about. But only time will tell. Turn the heat on. It's really cold here. Yeah, because um, when you're doing uh, self-employment, independent contractor work, uh, you meet all kinds of people, you network, you get other opportunities. I've had business opportunities uh, offered to me, employment, whatever. So you want to have that open open uh, availability uh, without being strict uh, to a 40-hour or to a, even a 20-hour. If they have a certain schedule, it could cut right into that. Um, so I don't know. Um, I don't know enough about it to really make a, um, to really, I just have to look more into it, I think. The traffic is starting to build up here. Alrighty. So, that's about it for today. I wanted to talk about that and then, you know, doing the pallet loads, pallet loads, and I want to do more of those. And as long as they're within the area, one thing about here is that in this area, there's a lot of these little small manufacturing companies, and they 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 the materials they move around because they one company may need plastics to do their job, and there's a plastic company, and another company might need aluminum, and, and then maybe fabric, and all these different things that move around within the same area. So you don't have to go too far to to, uh, to to get these jobs. You don't have to drive across the country or you know outside of your local area to, to find these uh, type of deliveries. So they're available, especially. Um, I'm starting to learn, especially in um, areas with lots of uh, manufacturing. Those are the best uh, for for finding those local. You know, those local runs like I'm doing here and there, you know. Um, you have to have that people that need materials moved, moved around. So, here there, there's quite a bit of that. I mean, it's, it's there's like steel, there's aluminum, um, ceramic, um, foundries, um, sheet metal. Mining equipment. Oh, what else? Yeah, it's stuff like that. You know, just that needs uh, different types of materials. So they need to move those. And they all kind of work together with uh, with uh, distributing those. Deliver, uh, well, I used to not deliver, I used to work at the, the UPS loading trucks. Um, some of our customers are like these mechanics, and, and, uh, the, and we would, you know, these parts were, I mean, they had differentials and a lot of tires. I remember I had to load all the tires. My job was to uh, drive around in those, the, um, they call it e rig driving, but you're basically driving around in the, the hub with, uh, you know, like those, those uh, electric. They're like carts, but they're like the ones you see at the airport where there are a bunch of them, like 20 or 30, I don't know, they're all hooked together like a train. And um, now do, and you had to do all the heavy, all the heavy like stuff like tires and tractor tires, I mean uh, truck tires and, because um, they weren't in a box. And differential, I remember the differential, those things were heavy. Um, the axles and differential, and uh, so that was my job. That was really heavy. I mean, a lot of work, man. Sweating by the end of the day, you're like loading all those, these carts, and then you have to drive it to the trucks and, and drop it off in the trucks, uh, so they could load it at the end. Because they loaded all that shit at the end, they, they put the they put the boxes in first. So um, yeah.
used to that kind of industrial, I mean the heavy equipment type of loading. to me really it doesn't make sense at all I would think that uh, you know independent contractors small businesses and, and uh, self-employed people should be supported and should be you know should be um, promoted I mean like should people, people should that's you know to me that's the American dream to run your own and if you can't you know if you're just a small business you have to do a lot of that independent contracting that subcontracting and all that and it makes sense to it's a good way to make a living it's flexible it gives people a lot of freedom but, but if they want to make everybody a, a w-2 i don't see how that's going to work for everybody i mean so many people i, I think the guy was saying i can't remember the numbers i think he was saying like 60 million people in the country in the united states uh, i'm not sure don't quote me on that but I think he said it was 60 million people that are independent contractors. So that's going to have a huge effect on all those people that are doing that kind of work. So it seems pretty drastic. But anyway, I'll look into it more and maybe I'll do another video on it. This is uh, Terrell Tampa Truck. Good Attitude Services signing out.